Good day, everyone. Welcome to All In Data's bi-weekly webinar series. My name is Chun Ming. I'm the principal consultant for All In Data. And um, today, our topic for a, week, a bi-weekly series of the webinar will be high availability and distributed monitoring with ICGA2. So um, just a little bit of an introduction on what is exactly ICINGA2 is all about. So ICINGA2 is a fork of NIGEO's monitoring system, okay, and is created by NetWays, uh, contributed by NetWays. And ICINGA2 has been in the market for a while now and is, is a really awesome open source monitoring product that I've been using for a while. And I would say that I think that too is a very powerful monitoring tool, right? And um, today we will cover a lot about what are the high HA strategies and the distributed monitoring strategies with I think that too, because um, monitoring is a very crucial part of our infrastructure. And of course, we want to make sure it's always up so that we can actually know what is happening within our infrastructure itself. Okay, throughout this um, webinar, I'll be showing you the strategies about that, and I will discuss them with you, as well as I'll show you some sample codes and time permitting, I will show you a demo of them. Okay, and um, if you have any questions, please put them into the questions uh, box at the on your uh, go to webinar control panel, and we will address them at the end of this webinar. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we will look into the Isinga 2 architecture. It's a very simple architecture that we all have. Um, this webinar assumes that you already have some basic knowledge of Isinga 2 and or you have already a installation or a setup of Isinga 2 somewhere, whether locally in your development test machine or within your production infrastructure itself. So generally, this is how our Isinga 2 infrastructure look like. We have the Isinga 2 master or the server itself. And of course, we have the database right there. Okay, as you can see, there's a database right here. And um, it will be used primarily, you know, for uh, storing the IDO objects, okay? And this is where we store all the Isinga2 data. And then we will usually use the Isinga2 client, okay? Whereby the it works as a master, master client setup where the Isinga2 client resides in the <clears throat> sorry, in the agent itself that you want to monitor. And then the client will send back all the monitoring results back to the Isinga2 master. So this allows us to do a, a local check on all our servers and then feed back the results back to the master itself. So this is what we are looking for. It's very simple and it's similar to the concept of the Nagios NRPE remote execution itself. Okay, so um, this is a very simple setup, right? So how do we actually start off with all this um, HA strategy and distributed monitoring? Because then when we, we start talking about these strategies or this simple setup, we will have questions on what if my Isinga 2 server is down? Where am I going to send all the data to? Okay, or I have different projects. I want to monitor different projects individually. How do I do that? Or I have like different locations. I want to monitor different locations. Maybe I have a dashboard for each location or I have a central dashboard for everything itself. So this is the part where Isinga 2 comes very easily. Okay, um, the way it's designed and the language itself makes it so easy for us to adopt a HA strategy or a distributed monitoring. This is one of the things that I like about Isinga 2 is the language itself. It made it, everything so easy and the configuration. All right, so let's take a look at our first monitoring uh, uh, HA strategy, okay? 
So bear in mind that a lot of these uh, strategies are provided by Isinga themselves, right? So we'll cover three different strategies. So the first strategy that we'll cover is the HA strategy itself. So the high availability strategy, meaning that we, you know we want to have a high availability, high, high available setup, so that we can monitor all the all the uh, server itself. So now let's take a look at this diagram. Okay, and this HA diagram looks a little bit complicated. So first of all, you need to understand the concepts of endpoints and zones okay in Isinga we have zones and endpoints okay what are endpoints endpoints are instances okay basically our master instances so basically in this diagram here we have four different Isinga master and these are what we call four different endpoints and a zone is an arbitrary name just like a name itself called zone it can contain more one or more instances within a zone itself so let's take so based on this diagram so what we could do is we put all our endpoints or all our Isinga instances in the same zone okay and all these instances will have the same Isinga features which is the the checking the alerting the notification um, the command, the API, or the IDO, MySQL. Okay, so this all these features that comes along with Isinga 2. Certain of these features allow us to be HA capable as well. So now let's take a look first of all what it means in here. Okay, so in our zone, we have four different instances. So let's assume this is one single zone. So when we add four of these instances endpoints into a single zone, Isinga is smart enough to know when I can load balance my checks between all these masters. All right? So an ideal number of servers or instances in a zone should be more than two because having two masters doesn't make much of a sense. Okay? So... Generally, Isinga 2 instances within a zone will elect a single zone master. So in this case, we have master 1 as the active instance, okay? So this will be the one that does all the routing of the check events, okay? And will have the, the, the HA feature enabled, for example, like writing to the database, okay? We, we cannot have all the data all the masters, one, two, three, and four, writing to the database at the same time. We should have only this, the active master writing to the database. So now we have this in, uh, zone here, and then we have all the instances. So all the checks will go through the, the primary master, which is the active master, and then it will be routed to either the master three, master two, or master four, okay? And then all the data of the check will be written to the, the database via the, the active master. And now, should the active master fail, let's say act master one has gone offline for maintenance or some hardware failure or network failure, what will happen next is that the instances itself, the endpoints, the remaining endpoints within the zone will elect a new master, okay, that says, okay, now I'm the new master, let me do all the routing of the check events, and then I'll be the next master that is allowed to write into the database. So now master one will be taken offline. It will no longer write to the database. And assuming master two become the new active master, it will be the one routing all the check events, all the notifications, and it will be the one doing the, the read and write to the database itself. So when the moment master one comes back, it will be, remain as a failover rather than the active one. Okay, 
So this is a very simple HA setup. We don't really need to have a complex configuration out of this. We all we need to do is we just say um, we we create an object, uh, an endpoint object for each of these instance. Create a single zone instance. Uh, uh, create a single, sorry, create a single zone object, and then add all these endpoints into this zone itself. Okay, so how do we configure all of this to make it happen? So the code is pretty much simple. So I'm gonna show you here on the next slide. So as you can see here, first I have the endpoint object for master one and endpoint object of master two. And this will define the object, the endpoint itself for all the instances within the zone. And then, the third object you can see, which is the zone object, I can say is the master zone. And the endpoints are master one and master two. So basically now I have two servers in this zone and it will be load balance HA between the both of them. So master one could be the first active zone and then it will be doing all the, all the writes to the database. And then master two will be on the standby failover. Okay, so should the master two goes, uh, sorry, should the master one goes offline, then master two will take on the active role. Okay, we can add more servers into this zone by simply adding the endpoint names into this uh, endpoint array here. So I could create object endpoint master three with a host of uh, 192.168.0.102 and then my master zone endpoints, I could just add master tree at the end here as a part of the array. And then now I will have three endpoints within a single zone and that will be my HA setup, right? So it's pretty much simple that way, okay? But then again, there are some things that you need to know. Okay, what about the configuration and all this? How how does um, the sorry? How does the the endpoints in the same zone sync all this configuration? Which host to check? Which services to check? And so forth. Okay, so what we have is a a zone called the global templates. All right, so now. In our configuration, we want to create a zone called the global templates. And then we set the attribute of global to true. So whatever configuration that we set in here will be propagated and shared across all our <clears throat> across all our endpoints, okay? Because we do not want to have different templates, different configuration between endpoints because they are all the same server. They are, they are meant to be the same server providing the same check, providing the same services in the same in the single zone. So it makes sense to have a single global zone for either templates or your checks where everyone will sync from a single place. So let's take a look at how do we actually further configure this? So in our API, now we will set it to accept config equals to true and accept commands equals to true. So this allows us to have saying, okay, I'm accepting configurations from the configuration master or I'm accepting configurations or commands from another master. So that this way it will keep all our configurations in sync between all the Isinger servers itself because we want to have the same host checks, we want to have the same service checks across all our Isinger server. We don't want something that is checking with different values because it's meant to return as a, a monitoring, a trustable, reliable monitoring data, right? So if we cannot have a reliable monitoring that was the point of having a monitoring in the first place. So having things like the global zones or configuration syncs 
between the endpoints, it makes our life a lot more easier. Okay, let's take a look how we utilize this in our next strategy. Okay, in our next strategy, we'll be talking about distributed monitoring. Okay, now in distributed monitoring, okay, you will you will come across a lot of uh, questions like this, okay, where I want to monitor this zone, this DMZ zone, DMZ1, DMZ2, I want to mo monitor client 1, client 2, I want to monitor uh, data center 1, data center 2, yet at the same time, I want all this to be independent on its own, I want all of this to be isolated, so because all this Data should not be, you know, overlapping one another. So how do we do that? And what's the layout? So let's take a look now into our setup. So utilizing the same concepts of zones and endpoints again. So now we will have a four different location that we want to monitor, and we have one single master location. Okay, so. Our Isinga primary Isinga server is based out of New York. Okay, it has the IDEO database and it has is the uh, Isinga web server. Okay, from there we can take a look at all the monitoring data, writing data into the database. Uh, that's where our configuration master comes from. Okay, that's our our master zone. So this is one zone. Okay, now what happened next is we will create four different zones, okay? Now, we have four different zones where we have Berlin, Tokyo, Sao Paulo, and Moscow, okay? So we have four different zones, but it's different from the previous HA setup this time because all these four zones are the child of the master zone, okay? Of the child of the New York zone. The New York zone will be the parent for all the other satellite zones, okay? The satellite zones, now in here, we could have their own uh, endpoints that they can use to check all the servers locally within their location itself. So, for example, in New York, I have the master server. I will be checking all my servers only within New York. And then I have the Berlin location. Okay, and the Berlin zone, which is the child of the New York zone, will have its own endpoints within this configuration. Now, all the servers, all the Isinga servers in here will be only monitoring all the servers in Berlin. And then it will feed back all the data to the New York or it will, or it will project the data here itself. So, meaning that you can have a local store of your monitoring data locally in Berlin, but it will also replicate the data back to New York. Now, let's take a look at the next location. We have Tokyo. Same thing with Tokyo, okay? It's an isolated zone away from Berlin, isolated away from New York. So you would not be monitoring any other zones that you have. You will be only monitoring servers within New York, uh, Tokyo itself, okay? And all the monitoring data will be stored in within Tokyo, and it will also be shared with the master zone in New York. So both Tokyo and New York will have their own monitoring data. And as far as you know, the data from Tokyo and the data from Berlin are isolated. They are not accessible between each other. It's only accessible by the master to view. So now if you have an Isinga web server, so you will log into your dashboard and you will see uh, data from both Berlin and Tokyo. But with the, with the Isinga web server's roles and permissions, you could restrict your users from viewing everything. You can say user A can only view data from Berlin. User B can view only data from Tokyo. So this provides you the concept of project-based isolation 
tenancy, whatever you name it, right? Because now our data is all, you know, separated. So this way we have a distributed monitoring that we can, we have with Isinga. We do not need to say, I have to monitor everything and then we have, I have to segregate it. No, because we can create separate zones that isolates itself within its own zone. So we have Berlin, Tokyo, Sao Paulo, Moscow. All of this data will be in individual to their own zone and you will send everything back to the New York, which is the master, which is the parent, to view everything in a collective as a network operation center or or your your headquarters or something. But locally in your these local offices, they will have they will be only able to view their own monitoring data. So again, how do we configure this using the concept of uh, end zone and endpoints? Okay. On the left hand side of the screen, you can see my endpoint objects. I can say I have the New York master, I have Berlin satellite and Tokyo satellite. All right, um, there's a little typo here, so just you can ignore it. And then here on my zones, I can have a New York zone, endpoint New York master, All right? So basically I can have a New York server in the New York zone. And then I have a Berlin zone, which have the Berlin satellite, which is a which has the parent of New York. So this way, now I'm saying that I create a new zone called Berlin, but this is a child zone of New York. So meaning that all my zones in data within Berlin itself is independent on its own, and yet my parent is New York, so I'm actually sending back exactly the identical data back to New York so New York can get everything from the child as well. And then here we see object zone uh, Tokyo, endpoints Tokyo satellite, parent is New York. So the same thing, it goes back to our, our infrastructure diagram earlier, isn't it? I have Berlin, I have Tokyo, I have New York. This is the parent. And this too is a child and whatever service that in here will only check the servers within this location. So I could add more and more zones as I need as long as I'm pointing back to the New York as a parent and then hence I will have a distributed monitoring. Okay, I do not need to say segregate it based on location. I can segregate it based on our zones in, within the infrastructure, like the network zones. I have like um, DMZ1, DMZ2, VLAN1, VLAN2. So you can monitor all these different VLANs or different DMZs independently using the concept of zones and endpoint without having need to worry about data overlapping or security and whatnot because the connectivity between the master and the or the parent and a child is secured by SSL, assuming that you are using the Isinger master and the client setup. Okay, so, so we have covered two HA and distributed monitoring setup. So, but then again, these are very simple. The reality of the situation is our monitoring capability should be a little bit more complex. So what about the last strategy that we could cover and let's see how complex it could be okay the next thing will be um, the load distribution okay we want to make sure that our i think our servers are not overloaded from doing too much of checks and and whatnot okay because having it to do too much check could actually you know burden our server okay it could uh, slow down the check results and should the server goes, the I think a server goes down, what will happen? Okay. So now let's take a look at this diagram. It's a little bit more complicated now, but if you recognize this, it's actually an ID identical to the previous two strategies that I've highlighted earlier. 
The only difference is it's more of a combination between the both. Okay, we have here we have the concepts of distributed monitoring, right? We have cluster two, cluster three, and cluster one, and cluster one being the parent, okay? And then after that, within the zone itself, we have a HA between the zones, okay? So meaning that now you can see that I have the concepts of zones to isolate all my monitoring to make it distributed, and then within the zone itself, I have a pool of satellite servers or Isinga servers that allows me to do a checks on all my hosts or services so that I can see what is happening within my setup, right? And again, all this data will be populated back to the master zone, okay? So in the master zone, we have all the configuration where we we write to the database, we, have, we project it to to, to real-time graph like Grafana or Kibana, and then we have the Isinga web server itself. And then we have a pool of masters to to do all the active, to do all the checks and whatnot. And then we have the cluster number two here. We have three endpoints within this satellite, within this zone number two. And then, so we can load balance all our checks itself within this so that our servers are all HA. So if my one server goes down, the other two is still actively monitoring the infrastructure. So that way that we will say, oh, okay, now one server is down, but I don't have to worry because the other two server is still running within the same zone and I still get my monitoring data and my services or my hosts are still healthy. So less problem for me, right? And same thing goes to cluster three. So this irons out a lot of simplicity between our configuration, right? It's a combination of both of the HA setup and distributed setup to allow us to have a more combination, combined load balance setup. So what about the configuration that allows us to do this? Okay, now on the left hand side again, you can see there is four endpoints, the master node, checker one, two, and three. And then we have the zones, we have three zones, the master, the satellite one, and satellite two, okay? So satellite one and satellite two is the child of the master zone. And satellite one, you can see it has a load balance checker one and two, and then satellite two can have checker three. So does this mean that's the end of it? No, you practically you could add more master nodes. You can add more checker nodes to, to all the satellites, or you can even add more satellite zones pointing to master as a parent. So this is, the simplicity of the Isinka configuration that allows us to do a um, HA setup, distributed setup, or a um, monitoring setup easily, right? Or well, this is the configuration part of it in the you know the Isinka object perspective. But obviously, it could be a little bit more complicated. Where first of all, you need to set up the SSL certificates, okay, you need to set up the Isinga client on each of all these endpoints to communicate with the mask to the primary Isinga server before all of this could happen, okay? And then you will talk about the, um, the, the global configuration, the synchronization of the configuration so that everything could fall into place beautifully, okay? And now, um, that's about it, okay? I will uh, take some questions right now, if you have, um, let me see. Okay, the first question here, are there constraints around setting up a zone from a network perspective? Do all the masters in a zone need to be in the same network segment, same DMZ? Yes, so basically you want to have a server right okay let's say you have a pool of masters you obviously want them to be in the same 
zone. Okay, but then again, you need to have these masters be able to communicate with each other. So as long as your network permits them to communicate with each other, I think your your uh, restriction or your constraints should not be there. As like again, I repeat, as long as you have a communication link between the servers on port 5666, which is the Isinga uh, client port, then your zones, your, your servers within the single zone itself will be able to communicate with each other. Technically, you should put your, your uh, let's say, your servers in, like, in the single zone, which is like the Berlin, within the same network segment or within the same DMZ itself. Okay, and the next question um, is the IDO DB outside the master servers. Ideally, you can have IDO DBs anywhere. First, on the master server, on the master zone, you should have an IDO DB. And then on your satellite zones, you can have a local IDO itself. So the local, the satellite zone will write into the local IDO as well feed data back to the master zone and then the master zone will write into its own IDO. So you have two separate IDOs, which is one exclusively for the master and another one exclusively for the local satellite server itself. Okay, so that way your both your IDO data are still isolated or separated. Okay, and the next question on, on load balance HA cluster master satellite, only one is active. Okay, how to load balance the server load if only one is active and uh, others is fail act, fail over, not active or no load. So um, it says it's active is because this active server will be the one deciding where to route all the checks. Okay, it's technically is not like a failover. It's more like a um, you know it's more like a Typical load balance setup where, okay, in the load balancer, you still have a single point or a single server or a single area where it tells you to say, okay, I want you to route this check to this server, this server, this server, and that server. So this active master, right, this active master will be the one that tells, tells the other servers in the zones which server should take this check? Okay, so if a check results comes in or a check needs to go out, the active master will say, this server, this endpoint A takes this task, endpoint B takes this task, endpoint C takes this task. So technically it's a load balance setup. It's just that the, the active one is the one responsible for determining or routing all the checks. How does the heartbeat work between the master or satellite? Okay, so um, it it bound by the communication itself. So it has a TLS uh, connectivity. So the moment the the communication is is uh, like cut off, and then you have like maybe one or two seconds, and then it will it will say, okay, I'm dead. The connection has been cut off. Let's flip over to the next master. Okay. You can configure that in your uh, Isinger objects itself, okay, to or your configuration that allows us to do that. Because, again, like I mentioned, the communication between the zones or between endpoints within the zone are through SSL, okay, is through port five six six six, okay. As long as the communication there exists, it works because it keeps pinging each other, like maybe every second or so to check, okay, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And if the moment it stops responding for maybe one, two or three seconds or X number of seconds, and then you say, okay, the master is dead. Let's switch over to the next person or switch over to the next uh, uh, server, next active one. That's, that's how it goes, okay? And, um, Okay, that's the questions I have. And are there any more questions? I hope I managed to answer all of your question.
Okay, if there are no questions, I we do have a little time left for a little short demo. Let me share the screen for that. Okay, so I so now here I have two servers, Isinga A and Isinga B. Okay, so Isinga A is primarily the master server and Isinga B is the checker server. Okay, so the configuration is very simple. In here, I define my zones. So I I have I think a A, I think a B, master and the checker. Identically, I will do it in the I think a B itself. Okay, and you can see both of them have the identical setup, so that I can say, okay, this is my configuration, and this is where. I'm doing the um, how do you say uh, uh, the the zoning, the uh, clustering, the load balancing, and so forth. Okay, and then obviously we can see have a global templates here, which is set to true. All right, now for each and every of these zones, I have my own monitoring configuration, right? Into zones D. Okay, in zones D is a folder matching to all my zonings so in the checker zone which is where i think a b is i will have a list of hosts of services or anything that i want to monitor so let's see host.conf okay i i have a demo host in here that i'm i want to monitor okay but then again i have the configuration on the master on the i think a master and the configuration here in zones.d does not exist. But thanks to the part where I say there is a um, configuration sync between them, feature enable is through the API feature. You can see here, except configuration is equal to true, meaning it will sync the configurations between the two zones. All right. And let's see. Where it is synced to in the in the uh, secondary zone where it is receiving all the configuration, it gets stored in var lib isinga and API zones, and then you see we have checker and global templates, right? And then in checker we have etc. We have additional services, cam, host.com, and services, exactly like what we have. So let me modify some configuration in this checker zone. Let's say um, I want something simple. OK. Uh, la, la. OK. I. I have a, this is just for a t test purpose, okay? So if you see here, I have, I apply ping six. Okay, and then I see here, demo. Okay, so we have another service called ping six demo that I add into this, okay? So I'm going to do, reload the service. And then the next thing here in var checker. And then I look into the services. Okay, let's see here. We have now we see the configuration has been updated, and I have ping six within the ping six demo in my checker configuration. So I can store all my configuration in a single configuration master, and then I synchronize all of them to their respective zones so that I do not need to have duplicate configuration. So this is the top-down approach where I'm pushing all the configuration from the top all the way to the bottom, 
or you can do it where you can do it from the bottom all the way up. So that is how things take place within our within Isinga itself. So if you understand more of the concepts of zones and endpoints, then creating a distributed setup within Isinga itself should not be that difficult for you. Okay, and all right, so I have a uh, another question here. When the master and satellite disconnected, will data caching at a satellite, will data cache at a satellite and re-update, resend information once the connection back between master and satellite? Yes, that, that will happen, okay? And so the next question is, can I show the configuration for master satellite one, satellite two, and when satellite two send check to satellite one okay so um let's let me show it to you once more okay okay here is the configuration between the two two zones so basically the master and the satellite which is the checker okay so that this is just a simple configuration all right and you can say, okay, I have the master zone and I have the checker zone. And the checker zone is the parent. And then the master is the parent. Okay. So this will show, create a link between the master and the satellite zone. Okay. And when that happened, all the check results from the checker or the satellite will be sent to the master. And there will, and if, let's say, if I create another zone here, Check it two, and I think a C maybe. All right, checker two and checker one. Let's put this as checker one. Are two different zones. Their data would not overlap one another. Okay, and if you want to do um, a monitoring of your zones itself, you can do the monitoring from the master zone monitoring the other zones with that configuration you can see it in cluster 2a here we go you can see i am checking my cluster and i'm checking my cluster zone so you can have an object service to check the cluster zones or to check your cluster itself so this provides us um, monitoring data on our individual zones okay and um, back to the slide once more okay okay here you can see again once more you have the master's node and then you have checker one checker two checker three node and then you have the master zone satellite one and satellite two node uh, zone okay so satellite one and satellite two are isolated zones they do not talk to each other but both of them talk to the same parent which is the master and then each of this zone could have their own load balance uh, checker nodes which is checker one two checker three checker four and so forth okay this way then it will send the data or route the data as we configured right here itself so it does not have to be, you know, um, really complex, right? It's only the way we design our strategy that could make it pretty complex. Okay, are there any any other questions for for these strategies yourself? Okay, if you do not have any more questions, okay, you can always go to isinga.org and slash download. You can download a um, vagrant uh, image, okay? Uh, a vagrant setup that allows you to test out the Isinga clustering setup, okay? And, or you can just try it out yourself and download and try to configure it yourself. And also, do you know that for those who's in Europe, we will have an Isinga camp in Amsterdam on the 28th June. I might be there itself, and you will be able to speak to 
all the Isinga experts and then the Isinga contributors, the netways, the company behind Isinga themselves will be there to help you or, or to answer your question on all the Isinga related uh, questions that you have. So if you have no other question, then thank you for uh, your time. And I we do sign up for our next webinar, which is in two weeks time. And hope to see you again. Have a good day.